Hello, everyone. I'm Lisa Amparofsky. I'm the Chief of the Division of Infectious Diseases at Albert Einstein College of Medicine and Montefiore Medical Center. And I have the great honor of interviewing my colleague, friend, and faculty member, Teresa Madeline. Thank you, Dr. Porofsky. Uh, so uh, I am the healthcare epidemiologist for Montefiore Health System, which means that I oversee uh, things like infection control, hospital epidemiology, and our outbreak and pandemic response. What can you tell us about testing? How have we kind of adapted to testing? Uh, we clearly went from a situation where we weren't allowed to test, or we needed to get permission to test, to where I think that we developed one of the first uh, most rapid turnaround testing systems in, in the city. So what can you tell us about testing and how it fit into your whole management of the crisis? It's a great question. So I feel like we have come so far on the topic of, of testing. <laughs> and I remember a point in time early on uh, in this event, I think this was the beginning of March maybe, where in, in a single moment, there were, I believe, four different official recommendations for who should be tested and when. And I actually put them all together because I felt it was really important for people to understand actually how much ambiguity and uncertainty there was and what we were contending with together uh, as a health system. And I actually think that it really helped people um, to just recognize that actually there aren't really one set of true guidelines yet. So we're gonna do our best and we're just gonna keep adjusting as we go. I do think that very, very quickly there was a recognition uh, nationally, but particularly here in New York City, that broad testing and aggressive testing was really going to be necessary if we were going to do this in the best possible way and to identify the most cases. There's a number of reasons for that. Certain epidemiologically, it makes sense um, now that we know, although we didn't then, that people can have very few symptoms or no symptoms um, and potentially spread the virus. That makes testing very important. Uh, but in addition to that, we have to remember that when this began, we were still in the middle of influenza season. Influenza was very prevalent at this time. There were a number of other viral illnesses circulating. And the symptoms of COVID-19, particularly early on, can be vague and, and very similar to those other diseases. And if you're going to be able to properly treat someone, isolate them, um, and really figure out who has COVID and who has something else, you have to be able to test. And so very, very quickly, we went from extremely narrow parameters for testing people, and within a week or two, we really had opened it up to nearly everyone coming in because we started to recognize that we just had to capture every possible person and that the presentation of disease that we were actually seeing in real time was not the same thing that we were hearing about. It didn't match necessarily with the case definitions and the guidelines or even some of the data that came out of China. And we, we really had to base it on our own real-time experience and do what we thought was best and brought in that list of symptoms um, and the number of people that we were going to test. And it served us very well. At this point, we're testing every person uh, who comes through the hospital doors because we now know that people can have no symptoms at all uh, or be pre-symptomatic, uh, and we want to ensure that everyone is safe when they're within our walls, both our healthcare providers and the patients. So now everybody who comes here gets a test. Yeah, that's great. And we also were able to test um, our employees in the community. We were able to set up some sites where where employees could go. Uh, could you talk about that for a second? How that was set up and how I would imagine that it connected different parts of our of our center? Absolutely. I think this is critical to be able to test um, those who are providing that care. This is so important. If we can't take care of the people who work here, um, they can't take care of other people. And so we really have to make sure to prioritize testing of, of healthcare providers and really anybody who, who works at the hospital. So this was a huge undertaking, but one that I think we're really proud of here. We stood up an entire uh, call center and really borrowed a large group of people from our primary care practice to really focus on taking phone calls, 
listening to the types of symptoms or exposures or any any information that uh, an associate who works here was able to give us and to streamline the process of getting that person a COVID test and making sure that the result of that test got back to that person and that they got appropriate advice about whether or not it was safe for them to work and even counseling them about how to protect themselves and their family at home. Um, that was, I think, extremely valuable to our associates and, and just a really critical step. Um, it involved setting up actual testing sites. So all of this is happening at a time where, uh, as we discussed earlier, personal protective equipment was in very short supply. And so yeah. we had to think really critically about how do we want to create an infrastructure to test people efficiently, but safely? Uh, and how do we preserve personal protective equipment? How are, can we be smart about the swabs and the chemicals that it takes to run these tests? How can we steward those resources um, in a way where we can maximize our ability to test everyone. And so we set up several uh, strategic testing sites. Some were drive up sites and some, uh, because not everybody in New York City has a car, were accessible um, in other ways, either by walking uh, or uh, other modes of, of transportation so that everybody felt that they had access to a site. And we had a scheduling process. Um, by which somebody got a specific appointment slot so there wasn't crowding in any of the testing sites. And we had a dedicated trained team of people to actually perform the swab and even a safety officer at each site to oversee the process and ensure um, that and none of the safety protocols were breached and everybody was doing exactly what they were meant to do so that nobody um, had a potential exposure during the testing process. Um, and it worked really nicely. Um, we performed thousands of, of COVID tests um, and I think it was an incredible service to to our associates, but it definitely required a large team effort uh, to make it work well.